gang, welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, this is gonna be a short, but I think important video in terms of conjugation. And what I wanna talk about is halogenating and specifically, right, we're only gonna be doing this with bromine at the allylic position. You're going to see that when you're talking about conjugated systems, you know, sometimes it will be advantageous or you need to actually complete a reaction where you will be sticking a halogen on the allylic position in certain scenarios. And in fact, we will only be able to do this, with, do this with bromine, but we need to use a different reaction than the free radical chain reaction that we learned at the beginning of OCHEM 1. So if we take a look, right, this looks familiar. This was one of the first reactions you most likely learned in an organic chemistry period. It's if you have an alkane and you have Br2, light and heat, you will, we know the mechanism, you create a bromine radical, you create a carbon radical, then you bring another Br2 along, you stick a bromine on, we actually get to functionalize one of these carbons. So, you know, without, you know, new, being new to conjugated systems, you might think to yourself, why does, you know, if it worked then, it should work now, right? And so did I when I, you know, was in organic chemistry. But in fact, what happens is because we have this double bond and, you know, because we've done alkene chemistry, what happens is because you have so much Br2 up front, right? Because bromine's a liquid, you'll probably have a lot of Br2 molecules swimming around when you introduce your organic reactant. What will happen is the bromination of a double bond. You will in fact have the double bond, grab a Br, you'll kick that off. You'll create that cyclic bromonium ion, if you remember that. So, oh, that's kind of ugly. Long story short, I won't go through the full mechanism, but you end up having that addition across the double bond of bromine where you actually have, you know, just for fun, we can remember that it's an anti-addition, so you have one above, one below, that whole jazz. So this, what I'm trying to say is, doesn't work the way we expect it to up top. So how can we, in the world, functionalize allylic carbons in such a way by halogenating them, right? How do we do that? Sorry, just too many words. How do we do it? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna show you how we can do that with a new reagent and a new reaction. Uh, the reagent's called NBS, and you'll see that works just as well. So gang, since the free radical halogenation is not an option for us to put a bromine, uh, to halogenate, to brominate the allylic position, what we can do is we can use a reagent called NBS, and specifically you use NBS in light, and you may or may not have heat present. So what does NBS stand for? It's a crazy mouthful, uh, N-bromosuccinamide. You don't need to know how to say that. If you can say NBS, you're in good shape, just in life and in organic chemistry. So how does this work? And I, this mechanism really isn't asked a whole bunch, but I think asking the difference as to why you would use NBS for the allylic position versus free radical halogenation is a fair question. So maybe be aware of the, de you know, the details of what I'm about to say, but just remember why you can't use the free radical halogenation in terms of the double bond being brominated versus the allylic position. So what is, so NBS looks like the following. Okay, so really why NBS works so well for us in this situation is that we get a low concentration of Br2, low enough to where we don't brominate the double bond. It'll just, you know, give us Br2 and then the bond will homolytically cleave and we get a bromine radical. So it basically gives us little bits of Br2 that then become radicals that then interact with the double bond. So typically what you can do is you can sprinkle in some HBr or just something that will help uh, do what I'm about to show you is that if you have some type of HBr or something like that, you have kind of like a, an equilibrium and the equilibrium is very slight to where you have the bromine going with the bromine and the hydrogen going with the nitrogen. So I know these are crazy arrows happening, but basically we're having hydrogen with taking one of, you know, one electron from this bond and going with nitrogen, bromine taking one electron, going over with bromine. So all that's really happening here is we're swapping the, the nitrogen's getting a hydrogen instead of a bromine, and then we make Br2, whoop, Br, Br, and once you've made this, so again, this happens in low concentrations. So again, this is not super important. I think that you can reproduce these arrows, but I think, you know, for your class, I'm not in your class, but if you can just realize that NBS, 
reacts with something, whether it be HBR or something, to just give you little amounts of BR2, then, yeah, I'll erase this. Then, it's business as usual. Literally, the mechanism is so similar. You have initiation, where you have the low concentration of BR2, homolytically cleaves, and I will box, let's box this, not get confused. You have two bromine radicals, then propagation one. This is where we'll make our radical. You bring in our bromine radical, right? Then hydrogen gets plucked off by the bromine radical. We create our now very stable allylic radical. So we do make HBR as a byproduct, which will, right, you remember, will help us create more lower concentrations of uh, BR2 from the NBS. Then P2, you can run into another BR2, right? And again, in low concentration, but still being produced. But you also have more bromine radical being created just by actually doing the reaction. So, point being is that NBS is something you may see be, as you start your organic chemistry two career in conjugated systems, or if you, whatever you do, conjugated systems in organic chemistry two, and it comes down to the fact that we can't just use our regular free radical chain reaction skills we, because of the fact that we, you know, because of what we know from alkenes, or sorry, alkenes, this will, you know, whether it's Cl two uh, and light or Br two light and heat, we will end up halogenating the double bond. The way to get around that is using our new lovely friend NBS. Okay, gang, that does it for halogenating uh, at the allylic position with bromine and NBS. Thank you so much for watching. I hope, you know, if you feel like liking and commenting or subscribing, please do. If anything, I will see you all in the next video.